Hello, everyone. This is uh, Joe Glines from Automator, and today I have a couple of guests. Um, we got Leo Davidson, and he's representing uh, Directory Opus, and then Jean Alain, of course, from Quick Access Pop Up. And and so to start now, I've I've used Directory Opus in the past. I haven't been currently using it, but it is a really great replacement for Explorer. Honestly, like I, I'm kind of surprised that I had stopped using it because it it does add a lot of features and. Um, for those who don't know, I'm like, I, I love to just streamline everything and just be more efficient, right? And that was one of the things I love about it. Leo, why don't you go ahead now, if I'm understanding correctly, you're one of the three developers behind Directory Opus, is that correct? Yeah, that's right. Um, I mean, I, I started as a user um, a long, long time ago, back on the Amiga. Um, and I've, uh, I guess I, I became friends with the guys who write it. I've sort of got more and more involved and, and eventually quit my, my day job awesome. to, uh, to do that. <laughs> so, so, I mean, it's, it's basically me and John do most of the programming now, um, and Greg does a lot of the business stuff. He still does a little bit of programming, but he's, you know, he's more focused on the business side of things and keeping things running. Sorry about my cat. <laughs> Help yeah, me understand, I mean, and I love you just using like a unique selling proposition. So if you were trying to explain to someone, what is it that people go, wow, I, man, I wish <laughs> I had known about this tool five years ago. Like, what are, what are the top things that people go, this is amazing? It's hard to put any one thing on there because it, it really depends on the person. It is, I'd say flexibility is the selling point. So, sorry, my cat is moving my, <laughs> my camera around. I'm getting swarmed by cats here. Hang on. Yeah, you know, I, I mean, I'd, I'd say flexibility. So if you if you go to a certain folder all the time, I mean, like, like Quick Access can also do, if you go to certain folders all the time, you can set up a button to go straight there. I look at people using File Explorer and they're, they're clicking on so many different things. You've got to click here, go there. And now I want to go back to that. I've got to click on five different things. You don't have to do that. You can, you can have buttons that do, that go straight there and you can have two panes or, or tabs. And you can also create buttons that automate things. So you can have a, if you do a certain process a lot of the time, like, you know, 10 times a day or something, you can make a button that will just do that. So you select some files. My cats are now fighting. <laughs> you, you, you can select some files, you click a button, and it'll, it'll, it's, like, it's sort of like a script. I mean, you, already, you can literally run a script as well. And it'll, it'll go through a whole process of things, instead of having to click things, click that, click another thing, click that. Maybe, uh, um, Leo, uh, hi, Leo. Uh, hi. Maybe I could show it. I could share my screen just to show a uh, directory opus, and maybe you could describe from, from this screen. I'll show it. Oh. It's on a uh, virtual uh, machine that I'm, I have to find here. Where is it? It is. There it is. So it's full screen now, directory opus. Mm. Uh, so uh, maybe I can just jump in uh, and say thank you for your time, Leo, describing us this uh, <laughs> exciting <laughs> tool. I, I use it for a few years and yeah, now, maybe five, four or five years. And to me, the key point is to have two uh, listers or two folders or being open one beside mm -hmm. the other and having yeah. a lot of features, not only being able to drag, drag and drop from one to the other, but uh, to open multiple tab, for example, if I want to open something else here, I can have multiple tab. Um, you can have uh, synchronized uh, navigation, for example, if I, I have two folders on two different drives, but I have the same, same structure, it's very easy to navigate in the two of them at the same time, as you can see here. Oh, interesting. So uh, there's a lot of features. There's this uh, tree view on the left that personally <clears throat> I don't use. I'm, I'm, I have enough with all the tools within the lister. Yeah, but I you find can add, add tree, yeah. Here on the, yeah. So maybe you can just add to the first thing you see when you open Director Opus is the ability to have these two panes and inside each pane to have various tabs where you can have multiple things being open and making it easy to navigate from one to the other. Yeah. It might be worth showing uh, the, maybe editing a button, one of the toolbar buttons, just to show that there's, so each of the buttons at the top there, um, they all run a command or, or potentially a script. Um, yeah. These, these will change the, the appearance. And when you have photos or images, it's a nice view to have this like that. You can have only one, pain if you wish to have more space for your your content. You can have two panes horizontally or vertically. You can open uh, the metadata about the file that is selected on the right side, making it easy to change properties or things like that. And you can have a preview. So I'll maybe I'll 
here is mostly text file, but when you have images, you have on the right side here a pane with the image you select on the left side. Does it also, yeah. like Explorer, there's like a default for a given folder, but does it look at the files inside it and try to guess? Or In, in terms of like the display mode, yeah, it can do. It's, it's an option, so you can yeah. you can either configure it individually per folder or or you can you can use wildcards as well, so, which is uh, things like um, if you have a... A list, a list of albums under artists. Mm. You might want the artist level to be a certain way, but then the albums below, you want to you want to show the extra columns like the track titles and so on. So you can have a wildcard that says album slash star slash star slash star, which would match anything that's three levels below that file sort of thing. Uh, but yeah, you can also do it so it will say like if the file if the folder is seventy five percent or whatever um, images, then it could switch to thumbnails automatically. Um, I actually find that kind of annoying because it starts changing oh. when you don't expect it. Um, I, yeah. But it's, a, it's I, an I, option, you know. There's, there's yeah. thousands of options in there um, right. because every, everyone's different, aren't they? I mean, I'm not, every, I think not, you nailed it. The different and everyone, too. what they're doing is different. So, yeah. Well, so that's. I, I was going to say, I think you nailed that. it at the very beginning where you said, you know, what is the best, you know, unique selling proposition? It just depends on what you're doing. And, and exactly. for QAP, it's the same thing, right? It just <clears> depends what you're doing. All these advantages, I mean, if you dig into it, you'll find something you go, wow, that is awesome. Yeah. yeah. Right. And I, I mean, the, yeah. the preferences dialogue itself is a, we, we spent weeks just on that because <laughs> there's so yeah. much in it and there's so, and there's so much UI in here as well. Um, which and, is, and know, fortunately, like there's a search tool in the preferences so that you can easily find what you want to change, right? To change yeah. the, yeah. the that's, term, that's for example. missing like in every Windows I like everything where the word search for. Cool. And there are things that everybody use zip files, so you don't have to need, you don't need an external tool to open your zip files. They will be available there with all the tools. I know Explorer now does that too, but uh, it's very well integrated with directory opus. If you do FTP, if you transfer a file to an external server, it's very easy to connect to, um, to um, an FTP site. You can remember the username password, though not in this case here, but um, I think that the other one here will have. So uh, so now I'm connected where I put the, the download file for a quick access pop-up and it's very easy having two, two sides to take my new version and put it on the server with just drag and drop. There's a lot of tooling to the define tool here which will not be available when you're on the FTP, but here, very easy to find. Um, maybe I'll type this. So how these files here, I type demo, so they are in the demo folder. So that's why there's a lot of them, but uh, it's very, very good. And it can search inside files too. There's a very powerful search tool. Uh, if I just exit this. But that, I'm confused on that. F. I'm just, I'm confused on that search. The search displayed what was under the, the yeah. This one here, search from where you are, and and the subfolders. Correct right, me, but, Leo, if I'm not uh, uh, exact. Uh, but here, uh, when you open the search tool, you have here a lot of options. You can set in what folder or folders you want to search, and below, if you select the search subfolders, you can yeah, but, search inside zip files, right. and then you can. Go by wildcard, or and there are a lot of options here. You and also the text contained in these files can be searched, so it's very, very powerful. Yeah, I, my my question though was: you you typed demo in your search, the things yeah. that were displayed there didn't have the word demo in them. Yeah, they had it in in the path of the file. But that's what I'm saying is there. So not... That's the reason why there was a lot of them. But if, if oh. I search, I'll search ABC. If you do a file name colon demo, it should only find okay. That, that, that field at the top just goes through the window search. So the the top right field and the bottom are, are separate things. The bottom is Opus's own search functionality, and the top right one is Windows Search. It's basically, basically there to give people what they're used to from File Explorer. Although it seems that that's not really very documented, so Yo. nobody knows how to use a File Explorer <laughs> search. <either. laughs> Leo, I have this really old program. I'm uh, sorry, it's not really old, but it mimics the Windows XP search tool because oh, yeah. the the new version, I, you know, if you can memorize all the stuff, it's very powerful. But yeah, it, it's a terrible UI. It's one of those strange things that they like they 
they brought it in, made a big fuss about it, and they improved it a bit, and then they improved it a bit more, and then they completely changed it and scrapped it again, and now nobody knows how to use it, and it's not documented. <laughs> it's, I, just, I don't yeah. understand what they're doing sometimes. They, no. <laughs> so many things. That Another sort of done tool that, that I use frequently is the find and replace. Uh, the in fact the rename file, but you, you can rename not only using wildcards as you would do normally, uh, but you can use find and replace, and it's so much simpler doing it that way. So, for example, if I select the files here, and I want to replace demo everywhere in these file names here with something else. Whoops! I don't click new folder. I click rename. I select find and replace, and if I type demo here and type uh, A, B, C instead. So every occurrence of demo in the list of files will be replaced by, by A, B, C without having to fiddle with uh, asterisks and you know all these wildcards. That's, or, or regex, you could do regex also. I won't do the you change also, here, um, but you understand if I click apply or okay, it will do the file change. There's also, also uh, regex. And, oh, thank uh, you very yeah. much. Yeah. yeah. You can also type directly into that in that new name column at the bottom. Uh, if you edit one of the files, it'll it'll apply the same changes to all of them at once. So if you start oh, typing yeah, okay. there, I knew I would learn something doing this video with you. Video. <laughs> <laughs> so there's a lot. There's one thing that users are asking on the on your forum, Leo, is is can it replace the the file explorer if you wish that we have in dialog boxes? Hmm. And that's that the thing on. where uh, I'm very pleased with that. You suggest a quick access pop-up because yeah. it's not something that can be done by Director Opus itself. Yeah, can I ask a, a quick question on that before we jump to that, Sean, on, on the search yeah. replace? Is there an undo capability there? Yeah. Great. Yeah, that, uh, for those of us who think we know what we're doing, you know, and then you're like, oh, crap. Um, yeah. <laughs> So it'll it'll show you the preview, so you can check it first. Excellent. But yeah, even then, sometimes you make mistakes, um, yeah, and you, cool. yeah, you can undo. Um, Thank you. Yeah. Within reason, anyway. I'm not sure what. There's probably a limit to how many undos you can. I think it might be ten or something. Ten ten steps, not ten files, but ten steps. So right. Yeah. You can undo That's a lot. Yeah, plenty. Files. Ten times. <laughs> so, John, were you going to show us this? Uh... Yeah, so uh, there's this feature, changing folders inside, uh, if I open uh, Notepad. So when you save or save as a file, here Director Opus will not help you here with all these nice features, but, and, Many directory opus will, I would just return to directory opus here before, uh, many users will create their favorites in, in directory opus using this star folder here when you can enter the, the folders where you go frequently. But this list of favorites is not available when you are inside uh, a file dialog box. But with quick access pop-up, that's one of the features that uh, is integrated with directory opus is that you can open here the the, um, the directory opus favorites where you will find the folders that you put in your favorites here and it make it available inside any file open or save or save as dialog box and uh, so that's one of so i will change here to the music folder so it's now changed here automatically by quick access pop-up but knowing what you use in directory opus. Uh, that's one of the features of quick access pop-up being integrated with directory opus, but there's much more quick access pop-up will also know what is open in directory opus as, as it knows uh, with um, Explorer. So in the words, for example, we'll show you what are the current windows that are open. So it will not only show the windows that are open in various application or in Explorer, but also the folders that are open in the various panes of uh, Director Opus on the left side or the right side or different uh, tabs that you could have here. Uh, and it also allows to see what are the recent folders that has been opened in Director Opus or Explorer. And uh, the recent files is less related to that. And frequent folders, what are the folders that you open frequently uh, using uh, Directory Opus or uh, Explorer. This menu is not filled here because it's the demo environment, but after a few days, you will have 10 items, if you wish more, if you wish, of what you use the most frequently, so your preferred folders. 
Um, and of course, when we select a folder here, it will change the folder inside the pane or inside the tab where I am. I'll go here to my music folder and I, it's changed here. I don't have music, unfortunately, in this demo environment. Uh, so there, there's a lot uh, of integration and, and it's very easy as a programmer to detect what is uh, uh, what is the current status of director opus, what are the current files, current folders open, number of pane, which one is the active pane. So it allows quick access pop-up to react very efficiently to what's happening with the directory opus. Yeah, we've, we've, I mean, we've, we're quite happy to add things like that. So when I, I think you've requested a few things that we've added um, and other people have as well just to make it easier for other programs to to find out what's going on sort of thing. Um, I mean, obviously not everything's exposed, but everything is exposable, I suppose. <laughs> so we yeah. can add things if needed. Um, yeah, so I, I, I have to say it. as well, I like, the, I like the approach you've done with uh, with Quick Access by not sure, because lots of people have tried to change those file open dialogues in terms of modify the UI, and it always runs into compatibility problems. But your approach of, okay, we're just going to have a menu that appears over it, and it can then change which folder you're in, but it's not going to break anything. Uh, you know, yeah, it's really they, clever. It, works, it works well. Yeah, there are a few other tools doing something similar, but as you see, they work inside Windows and with DLLs yeah. and modifying things. And it's very risky on the long run when Windows change because Microsoft changes Windows frequently. Yeah. Uh, there's but so, the many, way quick access so many applications, you don't know how, some, I mean, some of them are actually moving controls around in those dialogues. You, if you start messing around with the UI, you're going to break something and, yeah. and it's confusing. You don't know. And, and quick access pop-up is using auto -out key. That is a tool that is working, I would say, on top of Windows, not inside. Yeah. So it will send command. You can send command to the UI itself. So uh, uh, pressing keys for you, for example, uh, but also it can use uh, DLLs or calls that are sent to Windows but using the component of Windows as they are. So, and Windows on this, Microsoft on, on, on this is quite good at maintaining this tool over the, for example, we just tried quick access pop-up in the last video we did with Joe, uh, try it with Windows 11 and it seems to work perfectly. Maybe some tweaking will be required, but it's very minor because quick access pop-up and auto at key behind it is using the thing I would say in a kosher way, instead of trying to yeah, to change it's the inside the of it. Yeah, yeah. Speaking of which, Leo, is there a com object for directory opus? Um, not well. It depends what you mean. There are there are um, in terms of scripting, there is, but only within Opus itself. So if you wanted to control it from outside of Opus, um, or the easiest way to do that is to. Sorry, my cats are running around again. <laughs> the easiest way to do that is to tell Opus to run a command, which can then run a script inside of it. Although there are various ways. In terms of more simple control, you can send commands to Opus from outside of it, which is easy to do. There's a, just a command line. But yeah, in, terms this of, utility in terms of common here called, and sort of uh, deeply querying things, it's easy to do from yeah. within, the, within a, a script that's running inside of Opus. The, the way that the Quick Access API works, that the, the API that Quick Access uses is there's another, there's another command line you can run, which will basically outputs an XML file with with state about depends. I mean, depends what you've requested, but you yeah. can have a list of folder tabs and window handles or selected files and that kind of thing. So that, that's yeah, this I mean, program here. The main program is here when you open directory opus. It's that's executable. <clears throat> I'm inside the the program files here. You don't have to go there. But Quick Access Pop is using this. I would say this companion to uh, to the main executable. It is the opus RT, and it returns. You send it a query, and it returns a result in the text file. So it's very easy to <clears throat> use, very fast. It's called every time you open the Quick Access Pop Up menu. It will just check what's what's up now and it takes a fraction of a second. So it's not really a, like a DLL or a COM object, but it, I think we get the same results, the same kind of time. There's a few other things I could say. Uh, I could talk a, a lot about the features, but I, a few ones I would like to show to those who, who don't know, who, can, who don't know uh, directory opus, the capability to, for example, when you deal with big folders and you have to move your things, it's very easy to know what's the size of a folder just to taking the mouse on top of a folder, it will tell you that this folder contains and everything that is beyond, that is below will have this size. So that's very simple, but so easy. You can also, if you wish to have all the, the size you use, I think it's under edit, calculate folder size. Oops. 
I'm, I'm in the system folder here. So it will tell you the size of every folder in, in a second. So it's very, when you do, you know, you have to do some uh, housekeeping in your files. That's uh, very convenient to have that. Uh, there's another feature that is, um, may, maybe I don't have the easy environment to show it, but it's a file synchronization. Mm -hmm. For example, you have a backup on a USB drive and you want to take your current files and just not copy everything that could take an hour, just copy the changes. So the synchronize tool is under tools here, synchronize. So believe, you see what is the source, what the destination, what kind of comparison you want from the source to the copy, a lot of options here. And then you click compare, it will tell you what's the volume of changes that has to be done. And then you'll say, go synchronize and it will do, do the, so it's an easy way to do backups without having to use a special file uh, application uh, to do that. And the last top five item that I noted that I wanted to show you, maybe, I don't know if there's an image here. Uh, maybe I'll just create one. If you do a print screen and then control V, you'll get an image because it'll, it'll yeah, place okay. the clipboard. Print screen here. And control V here. Yeah. Okay. Good tip. So convert image here. So you can convert to the format you wish. You can flip the image. Often the image is not on the right side. You can rotate it, resize it. When you resize, it will uh, keep the, the ratio and you can add a suffix to the image. So this one, I will make a thumbnail of this one here. So I have the same file, but automatically the thumbs uh, suffix is added. So it takes seconds to do things that would take much more time using uh, another software. Um, Another big selling point is that you can integrate other things. So in talking about the synchronize, for example, um, we can sync between two folders, but we don't have a diff tool built in, but we can, you can set up a button so that it will run an external diff tool. And I use uh, Beyond Compare, but it's, you know, WinMerge and lots of other tools. And you can set up a button that will intelligently, so if you've got nothing selected and two, two folders open, it will open the two folders in, on both sides. Or if you have one file selected, it will compare that to the file with the same name on the other side. Mm. Or if you have two files selected in the same folder, it will compare those without without worrying without the other side being involved at all. And so, I mean, that that saves me a lot of time as a programmer because um, you're you know you're often comparing old and new versions of things, um, and just being able to go to the file, click on two things, and press a button, and it runs up, you know, the tool of your choice. Um, yeah. Saves so much time. <laughs> Not, not having to I wouldn't try to demonstrate it because I don't use it frequently, but I look for that. Leo. There's so many things that you can yeah. discover. So, you know, that's like every tool at first you use 10%, then you get to 20% and maybe you stop exploring because you have enough with that. But there's <laughs> a, the, the other 80% that can uh, give you more uh, efficiency in, in your work and it's it, it worth uh, taking time to explore. <laughs> there's a very good help um, if you press F1 you will get um, local on your computer, local web pages. You can have the same on the web. There's a forum you can search like in every tool here. So if I search for an image, so you have the, all the, the help here. So it's very well done, uh, very easy to learn and to explore the, the features uh, of this tool. Yeah, we still run a manual. Not, not much of the software industry is doing that anymore, it seems. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's, uh, you have good writers in your team. <laughs> Directory Opus is a, is a paid pro there's a light ver there's a free version correct I think but there's uh, also there, there isn't a free, well there's a there's a free trial so you can, okay, you can try it out for I think 30 days and then if you um, you can extend it for an extended certificate you can try it out for 90 I think the title is. Yeah. Or... Is the license it's a one-time ongoing or it's a subscription um well it's it never expires but it's so i mean you, you buy that it's, it's not a subscription or anything like that so you, okay. you buy a copy you can use that for the rest of your life every four or so years we put out a major update which will then be an upgrade fee but in between there we, we do i mean our, our small updates are like a lot of people's paid updates sort of thing so i mean I, I think we should put put out paid updates more often but we we just sort of get carried away and you know, it's, it's always the people say, I'd like this. And we think, oh, I can do that. You know, spend a couple of days on that. And you want to get it out to people. So, you know, you're <laughs> just giving away loads of stuff for free. Right. Um, but, we, but we also, you know, work in the background on stuff. And we think, okay, if we're going to ask people for money, it's got to be 
it's got to be something big and worthwhile and you know because it people don't like paying if it's if it's just changing a few icons and that kind of thing we don't want to do that and it's not the sort of you know there's some people that put out things every year like clockwork there's a paid update and it's like what have you changed nothing really <laughs> if we don't do that we there's no cycle or anything like that no fixed cycle yeah it does cost money though <laughs> But Very not cool, that right? much for the for the the time you save using this tool. Hmm. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I, obviously, I think it's worth it, or else I wouldn't be working on it. But it does depend on the person. I mean, some people don't don't use their computers much, so it wouldn't be worth it to everybody. Um, but, you know, I'm not going to disagree with that entirely. But hmm. I, I have found, and I worked, I spent over you know like 20 years in corporate America. You know, granted, the people I worked with use computers all day, right? Yeah. The vast, vast majority of people that that I worked with had no clue how to use a computer. I mean, they were yeah. so oh, yeah. terrible yeah. at being efficient. <laughs> it was ridiculous. It's so I you. think really, yeah, almost anybody really, if you use a computer at all, trust me, it's worth it, right? Yeah. I, I think this tool and QAP, big advocates, um, it's just you got to take some time, you know? Because yeah. here's the thing, both of your tools, you guys' tools, They're both incredibly powerful, but uh, and I think on both of them also the complex the things they can do can be overwhelming, right? Mm. So I think you said pick one thing we talked about, learn how to do that with it, use it for that, and then as Jean said, over time, you know, add you know maybe once a week, go back and learn one more thing. Don't try to do too much at once because yeah. it's overwhelming. Yeah, and, and you know, you, you do one thing and you you bump into other things and you think, oh, that could be useful next time I'm doing something else sort of thing. Um, and, and going back to what you're saying, I think there's a there's a problem that a lot of people have where they don't think, how can I make this better sort of thing? How can I do what I'm doing better? They just think, this is how I do it. These are the steps. And they, and they just, they, they've just accepted that this is the hell that I'm living in. Sort of well, <laughs> you, you know what, Leo, let me ask you this. So <laughs> I've been programming in auto hockey for like 10 years and I'm a terrible programmer, mm -hmm. right? The thing, I, I don't learn how to program. I find other people's stuff and I borrow it and tweak it so I can get my work done. Mm -hmm. I don't care about how to program. I just want to get my work done. And even now I'll find stuff where all of a sudden I'll be like, I'm doing this same damn thing. I didn't even realize I was doing the same thing over and over. And suddenly I'm like, wait a minute, why didn't I automate that? And so then I'll you know spend some time automating. But it, it's crazy that this is what I do for a living. And yet I, I still don't see everything that should be you know i could automate yeah yeah and, and obviously there's a there's a trade-off some things aren't worth automating you do them once a year and the time you would spend doing that would wouldn't be worth it but other things you know you do them 10 times a day and even if it's a second or two it's you know you're, you're losing focus you're thinking about that and you and then you're like what was i doing I, 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 <laughs> <laughs> and it's the, the comfort of use Maybe there yeah. are 10 small steps that you can do um, repetitively. So now you do one thing and uh, everything behind, you just don't care about that. It's done. And, you know, it's done the right way because you made your your settings uh, properly. Well, and, and Jean, to your point, like what I typically do, I almost never automate the entire process, right? On something that has 10 steps, every pass, I'll, I'll automate one step of it and then manually do the other nine because I had to get my work done. And the next time through, I'll auto automate the second step, you know, and then I do the eight manually and I just kind of ease into it. Uh, but rarely do I automate the entire thing because a, I'm not that good of a programmer and I don't trust, you know, the automation to work streamlined without a human looking at it. But B, it's just not worth the effort. Usually things it's like, Holy cow, it would take me several days to solve this one little thing where I can do it in a second, you know, manually. So you know what? Screw it. It's just not worth it. I've sort of, I've sort of drifted towards that sort of thing as well. Because you can, you can say, you can say this thing is 10 steps. I could make one button that does the whole thing, but often it's, it's easier to have sort of five thing, you know, take 10 steps, turn them into five. And then you've got these five building blocks that you can do other things with Which as well. Which is, not, it's not a modular. Yeah, totally yeah, agree. Yeah. Right. And it still saves a load of time, um, right. but it's not like, I don't know, you can, you can make things too specific, I suppose, is what I'm saying. Um, totally agree. Yeah. 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 Awesome. Well, thank you so much for joining us. I'm going to put, I put a little short link. I'll put it over my head when I'm going to edit the video. Just put it there so people can easily find both yes. your guys' websites. Thank you again, Leo, for, for joining us here again, John. This has been thank awesome. You. Thanks, man. Thank you, Joe, for hosting this. You bet. This is a very cool stuff. Yeah. Right. Have a great day, everyone. Bye. Bye. Yes.